Hey, welcome back. Glad to have you here. It's been a little bit since the last video. Uh, today I'm going to be forging an axe drift, and a drift is a tool that's used to open up the axe eye and shape it after it's been punched. A drift is a consumable item. After so many axes, the drift does get worn out, and we've got different sizes of drifts, and certain sizes get to see more use than others so some drifts may last me a year some drifts may last me a month so this is something that I have to make myself you can't buy axe drifts so I'm just going to take you through the process of forging a simple axe drift and talk about some of the small nuances about the geometry of the drift and why it matters so not only am I forging drifts for myself today but I'm also forging drifts in excess for a class that I'm going to be teaching um, near Victoria Island in British Columbia Canada at the first week of February and we're gonna have a special guest in the class some of you or maybe all of you probably know Jesse Samurai Carpenter he has a huge woodworking channel and he does amazing woodwork he is going to be in my axe making class in Canada at the uh, 1st of February. So that's going to be a lot of fun with him. I am making these drifts for that class. And after the class, I will be heading over to his place. And we have some plans to do a video, which will be fun. So hopefully that will happen and you can look out for that in the future. Let's go ahead and get started forging axe drifts. The steel that I'm using is called H13. That H stands for hot work. So this steel um, is capable of retaining its shape and not becoming malleable while it's red hot. You can take this steel out of the fire to dull red color and it's like it's still cold. This is why it's such a good steel for our application of an axe drift. Uh, that drift is constantly being heated up inside of that axe eye and then being squished or hammered when drawing out the cheeks of the uh, axe. So if it can't retain its shape at high temperature, then uh, it, it draws out and it's destroyed. So H13 is a fantastic steel for hot work, and it's one of the only steels that's suitable for this type of application. What I'm doing now is just straightening the drift up. Very little handwork that's done to this because the steel is so hard while it's red hot. I'm basically just straightening, I'm not really moving metal. This forging will also look really rough compared to other forgings that I, I do just because it's so difficult to forge this material. 
and I really want to get the exact shape that I need on the grinder. When the steel starts getting a dull orange color, it really it, uh, doesn't move anymore. Your hammer just bounces off of it. It's so hard. There's a lot of different details that go into the shape of a drift. I will go over this drift specifically and what it's used for and why it's shaped the way it is and the subtle differences that really affect how it works. So this drift is a starter and a final drift depending on the type of axe that I'm making. So it has to have two different aspects to the drift. You can see here the bottom half of the drift actually tapers more than the top half of the drift. Because that's because this bottom half of the drift is where we're going to be fullering the cheeks of the axe and really working heavily. Whereas on the top half of the drift here, there's very slight taper. If I move my hand, you can see that it, from here to here it really tapers. From here to here, there's not much change in width. The reason for that is that this is our final size on the axe. We don't want our axe eye to taper in this direction on its final resting place. However, when we're doing cheeks of the axe eye, we want to make sure that this drift comes out really easily, and the drift comes out easier if it's tapered. So that's why this section is tapered really heavily, this section is not. Now if we look at the drift this way, it does have a constant taper from here to here. That taper needs to be present no matter what type of drift it is. It's so important. This taper is what helps hold the axe handle on the axe head is that forms the hourglass cross section. Now these tapers change on drift to drift depending on, like I said, what type of drift, what the drift is meant for, what type of ax, etc. So if you are doing drifts in different stages, then the smallest section of this drift has to be the widest section of the previous drift, or the widest section of this drift has to accommodate the smallest section of the next drift, if that makes sense. So each drift moves up. Thanks for sticking out to the end of the video and following me along as I make an axe drift. It seems like it's such a simple tool, and it is, but there's a few small nuances that really make the drift work well, and it gives you a good end product in an axe, and that is super important. Um, I wanted to end by sharing that uh, my book, Forged, did publish. This came out right after Christmas and so far it's been a huge success. Hundreds and hundreds of copies have already sold to over a dozen different countries worldwide and it's been great to see reviews that have been coming in, um, get all the feedback you know, from people that it's been helping. My goal for this book is to just impact and help as many blacksmiths across the world as it can. Um, it's a book mainly for beginners. It goes over a lot of things that are in other basic blacksmithing books, but the second half of the book really sets it apart from others. Uh, it talks about things that just really aren't talked about in other blacksmithing books. Uh, my philosophy is on getting started, how to start smart, uh, efficiently, and effectively. You know, what you should, what you shouldn't do in terms of buying, um, making, just all the decisions that go into becoming a blacksmith and starting a shop, teaching yourself, it's all in this book uh, on Amazon. If you just Google the Forged, A Guide to Becoming a Blacksmith on Amazon, 
you can get that for under $20. So go check that out. Appreciate it. And I will catch you on the next video.